The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing our look at the player cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion for the benefit of new players. On this episode, we discuss Rex Murphy, the seeker investigator in the box. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. Special thanks to Cole Monroe Chitty for the amazing art that graces the channel, Nicole Fiscus for the new Whisper in Darkness logo that I use for the podcast, and Nate Lost in Time and Space for the intro as well as the overlays. Thank you very much, I couldn't do it without you. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back everyone to our reviews of the player cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion for new players. We are taking a look at the Investigators. We're going to take a look at the Seeker Investigator Rex Murphy the Reporter. He has 3 Willpower, 4 Intellect, 2 Combat, and 3 Agility. He has the Reporter trait. As a response, after you succeed at a skill test by two or more while investigating, discover one clue at your location. His Elder Sign effect is plus two. You may instead choose to automatically fail this skill test to draw three cards. He has six health and nine sanity. So the first thing we need to talk about Rex is that his response has uh, ended up on the optional list of taboos. It has been uh, limited to uh, once per turn, which uh, I think is very appropriate. Yeah, uh, otherwise you can use it repeatedly and then that just gets really silly. And you can just, mm -hmm. you're, you're basically using a deduction every single action when you investigate and that's whoa there combining yeah, that with Milan Christopher and now all of a sudden you're yeah, you're in the stratosphere it's appropriate I, I highly recommend limiting it to once a turn it feels right between that mustache and those that stat line I, I kind of like Rex he doesn't overwhelmingly lean in one direction like Daisy does mm -hmm. you know and he has a, he has ability that just a lot like Zoe actually you just uh, you get rewarded for doing what you do and much like Zoe, you know, his deck building allows him to really utilize all aspects of his stat line, which is really nice. You know, if you want to yep. use that willpower, you can. If you want to, like, lean into some of the rogue agility stuff, you can do that, too. And he's pretty good at that. Yeah. And he can't fight really well, but thankfully he's a seeker, so that doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, I, I particularly like that he has um, three agility because that's, like, serviceable, mm -hmm. you know, for when you have to evade something. You know, you yeah, can throw yeah. manual dexterity in there, you know, and you, you might be able to make it work. And especially in a four-player game, like, that's all you really need most yeah. of the time, I feel. Like, mm -hmm. if you can dodge the enemy for a turn and get out of the way so the Guardian can move in and kill it, then you're usually fine. Then you're fine, yeah, at that point. Uh, I, I yeah, also yeah. really quite like his Elder Sign ability, too. I really Me like too. the idea of, like, choosing to fail and getting some other benefit other than succeeding the skill test which is cool. And I also like it, that his Elder Sign feeds into his ability as well. Yes. How, how often have you chosen to fail? Admittedly, I haven't played Rex in a couple of years. Don't you I, have to draw Elder Signs first in order to use his ability? Yeah, that's true. That's the point. I mean, I have done it once, <laughs> and I, I chose to draw three cards because my hand was empty because I had drawing the sign in my, in my thread. There you go. <laughs> There you go. One of one for one. One hundred percent of the time, Nate has chosen to draw three cards. I do enjoy playing Rex solo. I don't know how often I've actually chosen to fail a skill test for three cards. I guess it's nice if you are playing Rex in combination with something like Higher Education, which synergizes very well with him to keep your hand size above the threshold you need to get all of those uh, those juicy bonuses. The one thing I do find tricky with Rex is his enemy management. Because he has three agility, you, the tendency is to lean into agility with cards like hyper-awareness and stuff like that. But you can't really rely on 
agility alone. Sometimes you have to kill things. And so, yeah, the secret card pool just doesn't really have enough, especially at level zero, like your options do open up once you gain some experience points. At level zero, though, you're you're very limited. And so juggling the combat and agility, I find, can be challenging sometimes with Rex. Yeah. But if but if you're playing him in multiplayer, you that's not really a, a consideration. You just load up on stuff to succeed by two on your intellect skill test and go to town and clear the map of clues and let everybody else worry about the enemies. I think there's actually a good use for um, Dark Horse to help with uh, his enemy management because I think once a seeker is set up, you know, they get their Dr. Milan and they get their they get their magnifying glass they don't need a lot of resources so at that point they can just throw down dark like rex can just throw down dark horse and now he's at four agility and then you're kind of and you've got four willpower at that point too I so think i think there's a there's a there's a thing that could happen there yeah i could see that because then you could play fire axe as well and then fire exactly. axe, fire axe gives you enough of a boost mm -hmm. to be able to like kill the things you need to be able to kill yeah you can have like fire axe or you can or if you really it, it gets kind of expensive but you could also combo with um hyper awareness so that way you gain milan money and then whenever you have to then every chance you get you spend it down with hyper awareness mm -hmm. yeah there's 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 some possibilities there i think it's not a bad one so the reason why i mentioned this is that i've i've always been hyped about agility and agnes because it's agnes has three agility but she has access to level two survivor cards and as many as she wants, which kind of opens up quite a bit. It opens up Peter Sylvester for her, which can boost her agility. She can also take things like um, survival instinct. That's mm -hmm. a nice one. I guess Rex can take that too, survival instinct, although it's just one of his five off class slots, so it is a little awkward. I think he can lean into the agility. I think it's just kind of tough at the moment with this yeah. card. And you do have I've Got a Plan which is a card that I think Rex naturally wants to play, just given his ability to just generate tons of clues. But you really have to pick what enemy you're going to use it and when, because that card is kind of difficult to use. And mm -hmm. relying on that to be your only enemy management solution is a really great way of just dying early on in the scenario. Yeah. I like the recommendation of Fire Axe, because, like I said, once a Seeker is set up, like they don't need a lot of resources, so he can just take his Milan money and throw it into Fire Axe. I will say that uh, one thing I've noticed about Rex is that uh, if you've played Daisy a lot, if you bought the revised core, you play Daisy a bunch, and then swap to Rex, that four into I often forget that Rex has four intellect. I always think he has five because he's such a great investigator but he doesn't have five he's got four and so you actually have to put a little bit of effort into succeeding by two to get that additional clue it's not a slam dunk so while rex is great at gathering clues he does need help so you do need to play more skills like uh, perception unexpected uh, courage and stuff like that just to make sure you can get them over the hump especially at some of those higher shroud locations if you you know once you get up to four and five if you're trying to gather a lot of clues and and uh, it should be noted that uh, a lot of dunwich legacy locations have a lot of clues on them especially if mm -hmm. you're playing in multiplayer so rex can certainly he needs some help to to trigger that response reliably between magnifying glass and milan though that puts you up to a six yeah so like, then you're in good shape yeah that's that's pretty good i feel most of the yeah. time and then if you need the additional boost like you've got perception and unexpected courage and stuff like that so like that's true. that's generally fine yeah when you're in two player like you don't have that many four shroud locations that you have mm -hmm. that you're trying to succeed by two on and when you do they tend to have two to four, two or four clues on them. They don't exactly have 12. So you might only have to trigger his, to get his ability to trigger like once or twice on a four shroud location. So what I'm getting at is it's not like he has to be succeeding by two all the time on every location. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Because yeah. generally the, the locations that have lower shrouds tend to have more clues 
It's like that's yeah, which kind is of what the, he's good at. The balance, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you save the perceptions for things like the four shroud locations that are worth victory points. You mm -hmm. know, like what's it, Miskatonic University? Yeah. You know, and or then library. You're, yeah, and then you're in good shape. Rex's backside is uh, deck size 30, deck building options, seeker cards uh, level 0 to 5, neutral cards level 0 to 5, and up to 5 level 0 cards from any other class. Deck building requirements include search for the truth, Rex's curse, and one random basic weakness. He does have a deck building restriction that uh, I often forget about. Not that I, I've, you know, cheated and put fortune cards in my deck, but it's one of those things that if you're not, if you haven't played Rex in a while, it's easy to forget. He cannot include fortune cards in his uh, in his deck because uh, by his nature he is cursed. What are some of the uh, your favorite uh, off class cards uh, for Rex? Lucky cigarette case. <laughs> that oh. card is so good in Rex. <laughs> oh, right, man. that's like his signature card. Right, because he likes succeeding by two, and lucky cigarette case triggers off of him succeeding, succeeding by, two. by two. Yeah, although that one's yeah. not in Dunwich, is it? No, However, it's quick in thinking PFA. is, but quick thinking is, which is a yeah. very similar. Gives you a very similar benefit. You succeed by two, you get a whole a whole extra action. That whole archetype in Rogue is really appealing to Rex in general because of his natural synergy of wanting to succeed by two or more. Like yeah, he he, he is it. really the succeed by two or more investigator from the box. Mm -hmm. But they just happen to give all the cards to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else. Could, what else? We've mentioned Fire Axe. That's a fun one. Yeah, he I, can't. I think there is he a can't decent... take Lucky. What's he that? Cannot. Yeah, I think there's a decent Lucky. build there with Dark Horse and Fire Axe with Rex. Yeah, I think it actually works. Yeah, because um, then he has five. He has five intellect, which he's going to use like twice a turn. He's mm -hmm. got four willpower and four agility, so that kind of shores up all of the things he wants to do. I think there's a there's something to go with there. The difference between his high stat and his low stats are is kind of small. So if he tries to use off class things to like test with a different stat, it often doesn't work out so well. That yeah, and I, I feel yeah. like if you want to do the Seeker Mystic, just play Daisy. Yeah, at that point, just play Daisy. Yeah, that's true. We talked about some of the evasion cards, like Survival mm -hmm. Instinct. Yeah, I think those are those are pretty nice. If you're playing in one or two player, I think there might be a case for uh, Think on Your Feet. Mm. You know, with Rex, just to like stay away from the enemies and let the Guardian deal with them instead. Lone Wolf is nice. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, Lone there's nice. there's a couple yeah. different builds I think you could go. I think you could do like Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. try to like do the fire axe thing where you kill selected enemies and to just like pile the clues onto them and go that route yeah. or i think there's the route where you take lone wolf and some some rogue cards and try to generate tons of money yeah you know maybe you also take leo deluca and charisma and oh. you play like leo plus milan and now all of a sudden you have this ridiculous engine yeah with like a ton of investigate actions mm -hmm. yeah that could work you know what I'm thinking? I think the pro play here is actually I'm out of here because it's got two it's got two agility icons and it means he doesn't die. Sure, you drop all your clues on your location when you when you resign, but that's besides the point. <laughs> sometimes you just need to get the hell out of there, man. I mean Sometimes you just need to get the hell out of there. Yeah. That's it is what it is. I mean Yeah. I think Rex is a little more focused than someone like Zoe or is Zoe I felt you could really dip into any of the the off classes and really get some yeah. value out of it. I feel like Rex is a bit more focused in that regard. For the large part, the the Guardian and the Mystic card pools are less appealing to him. Mm -hmm. Guardian simply because he's already good at investigating and he's not very good at dealing with enemies. So those events and things like that probably aren't as appealing to him. Same with right. the weapons. And then Mystic, like kind of kind of the same deal, or it's like I don't know if shriveling is what he wants to be doing and how he wants to deal with enemies. Probably not. Mm -hmm. So I find that Rex is sort of in a weird spot in that regard. Whereas okay. you're probably looking more towards the the guardian or the the rogue and the survivor cards more than the other two classes. Yeah, that makes sense. Like um, yeah, I'm looking through some of these uh, scavenging. He might be able to make a scavenging build work. There might be something there. I think there's definitely something there. Yeah. yeah, I think he's not the worst user of cunning distraction. You know, if he's got Milan money, mm -hmm. you know, not much to spend it on. Yeah, things like that. Hmm. I think you're right. The whole survivor rogue thing 
for Rex. I think that makes a lot of sense, like, looking at it. There is one Guardian card, I will mention. Dynamite Blast. Why not? (laughs) If you've got extra money, why not play Dynamite Blast? It is a really nice one-of to have in a deck, you know? Oh, yeah. And he's terrible at dealing with enemies, yeah. Yeah, Rex, where'd you get that Dynamite? I don't know. One uh, deck that did make the Browns uh, when the Dunwich Legacy was released was uh, Rex Murphy with Burglary. Now, we didn't have a lot of good things to say about burglary during our revised core set review but rex is actually one investigator who can kind of make use of it because even if he succeeds on the investigate he can still get a clue which is one of the biggest problems with burglary is that you're you're not getting the clue it's so yeah i i don't know whether it's actually any good you know i've heard you know, some people think it's okay. Others have dismissed it out of hand. But if you're if you're really intent on playing burglary, Rex is probably the best investigator to try it out in. I think that could work in lower player counts, where Rex doesn't need to rely on his ability so much. You know, mm-hmm. and then you can sort of afford to like use burglary at lower shroud locations where you know you're likely to succeed by two or more and it's like you know he's probably going to succeed either way and getting a emergency cash isn't the end of the world for him but if you also happen to get the clue that's gravy so i can know i can see burglary in in a situation where your entire deck is based on funneling money into hyper into uh either hyper awareness or higher education and you just axe. want as, or fire axe. You just want as many resources as you can find, mm-hmm. as much money as you can get. I can see that's why burglary would work. But honestly, I'd probably use the slots on quick thinking. Rex's signature card is Search for the Truth. It's a one-cost event that has two intellect and one wild skill icon. The insight trait Rex Murphy deck only. Draw X cards, where X is the number of clues on Rex Murphy to a maximum of five. Certainly one of the best and cheap draw effects in the game if you've got the clues to uh, to power it. Yeah, and I think more importantly with uh, Search for the Truth, to be honest, is that if you're just if you've got everything you need and you don't need cards, it has a great that's th- it gives you three intellect icons to help you succeed by two on something. So mm. at its worst, it's still very good. It does also let you build those, like, Seeker Big Hand decks, if that's what you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. I've never tried it with Rex, but at least his signature sort of allows you to do that. And it combos with the uh, the Elder Sign ability, too. Oh, yeah. If you wanted to go that route. You know, so there's Mm -hmm. there's something there. This is a fine signature card. It's not very exciting, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's just draw X cards. I mean, not much to say about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we compare it to Preposterous Sketches, Preposterous Sketches is two resources, draw three. So this is mm-hmm. one resource. So if you pay one resource and draw two, you're still getting, well, then it's like, okay. But if you, once you start hitting like four or five, it's kind of awesome. Yeah. But you got to yeah. set it up. You got to have the clues. Yeah. And a lot of times, like in lower player counts, you're never going to actually have five clues. It's true. Especially it's true. in solo, like you're generally going to advance before you have five clues. That's true. But then at that case, the three icons really saves the day there to help you pass an important uh, investigation by two. Yeah. yeah. It's just not as exciting as like Zoe, where it's like Zoe's whole. Yeah, uh, her, her cross is like much cooler. Oh, yeah. It like combos with her ability, and it's like something you'd actively want to play. Or is this is like. Okay. I get it. If. If I'm playing Zoe and I see the cross in the opening hand, I am not mulliganing that away because I'm going to use it all game. Yeah. Uh, Search for the truth. If I see that in my opening hand as Rex, it is going right back in the deck. <laughs> yeah. J- cards that just draw you more cards. I mean, they're good, but they are kind of boring and not that interesting. I'd agree that this is, I think, a card that gets a lot better in multiplayer where having five clues is a is a greater possibility i don't honestly know how often i've played this one as a solo player i think i've often used it for the icons simply because you just never get enough clues to make it worthwhile because typically 
the act deck has, you know, spend three clues, advance. You know, you're never given a chance to, to gather five clues. And, and so you often don't have enough clues to, and I've never, you know, you don't, if you don't have enough clues, I'm kind of reticent to play this one. So I often end up committing it to something, but it's nice to have the option, especially if you end up in a situation where say your hand's gotten a little lower than you expected, you need your higher education bonuses or something like that. All of a sudden search for the truth comes in and on your, your up to a healthy hand size without uh, having to do, uh, to do too much work, which is yeah. nice. And three and four player, you're likely going to have five clues at some point, just yeah. because those agendas end up needing like 12, nine, yeah. you know, so like it's it's not unreasonable in those player counts. But yeah, in one and two player, you're, d you're just never going to be able to like effectively draw enough cards with this. And to compare it to another draw card of deep knowledge, where it's like deep knowledge gives you two curse tokens for three cards. And that's oh. divided among any investigators at your location. So again, it's like if you need card draw, that's another option too. If you have in Smith Conspiracy. Rex's signature weakness is Rex's curse. It has the curse trait. Revelation put Rex's curse into play in your threat area. When you would succeed at a skill test, return the revealed chaos token to the bag and reveal a new chaos token. If this effect causes you to fail the test, shuffle Rex's Curse into your deck limit once per test. I really like the design of this weakness. It doesn't necessarily hurt you, but man, I really don't like drawing that second token, especially if I've succeeded with the first one. Yeah, it's very yeah. annoying when you succeed by two and you like are relying on that to trigger some effect, whether it's mm -hmm. Rex's ability to draw or get an extra clue or the cigarette case to draw you an extra card and then you draw another token and it's either the auto fail or minus four or even worse it's like the elder thing or some oh. other nasty symbol oh. why you know, you know what's the absolute worst is um when the scenario token effects for the symbol tokens do a thing regardless of success or failure so it's like draw cultist take a horror Put the cultist back in the bag draw again <laughs> it's like no <laughs> or the second token you reveal is a is a token that makes you reveal yet another token <laughs> and then you're just on this roller coaster and it's like yeah i <laughs> i have heart problems i, I can't handle this right now <laughs> yeah and what's also really nasty is that even when you it finally goes away which you can't do that like you can't really tell the curse to go away it has to go away on its own back in the deck this one actually cost me a game i believe it was essex county express and and the exact situation you were talking about where i pulled a token i succeeded and then i pulled the second token and the effect on it caused me to lose the game because of the token itself and i was really annoyed at that point it, I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but I, that was a very memorable occasion where this one came back to, to bite me in the ass. Yeah, the, the problem with this one is that it can cause you to fail sometimes, but that failure is unpredictable when it's going to happen. And I think one of the worst parts about this card is it gets shuffled back into your deck, so yeah. it's chewing up your draw during the upkeep phase as well. So not only do you have a chance to fail, but then this thing is going to take up valuable draws that you may have needed. I know they've done parallel investigators for all of the, uh, the core set investigators. I think Rex is probably the one I'd really like to see from the Dunwich Legacy receive a uh, parallel that works with curse tokens because i think that's just that's just too perfect but uh oh yeah rex was designed well before the curse token saw the light of day so uh but i think they could do something really fun with fun with that yeah, yeah. especially because the seekers already complement drawing curse tokens anyway so it's like it's yeah. come on it's right there and i should note actually that i think some of the curse tech actually has the fortune trait which doesn't work with Rex. Oh Tempt Fate, God. I believe, specifically has the fortune. Oh, trait. right. 
Attempt fate is one of the best ways to add curse tokens into the bag. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Rex's curse can be quite annoying. It can uh, it can sting the at the most inopportune times, which I think is uh, is but very fitting. It doesn't do any damage. Doesn't cause any trauma. Doesn't cost you any XP. Oh you know, no no hold on hold on it causes trauma. <laughs> just just not in just the not game the <laughs> oh yeah so it's like out of game trauma yeah, yeah. but it, it doesn't it's not gonna cause him to like it's not gonna be like roland where he's gonna have three mental trauma as a result you know it's it's not gonna it's not gonna cause him to soak up resources like skids as weakness you know it's not gonna add doom like uh like agnes's it's just gonna be annoying and it's gonna and then it's gonna make you freak out a lot because you gotta like put the token back in the bag and you gotta shuffle it all back over again and then you gotta and then you gotta question your shuffling abilities when you draw the exact same token that you pulled out the first time and then you gotta go what did I do did I am I bad at bag pulling is this random is that is this random mechanic not random enough because of the physical limitations of my fingers you know it causes you to question reality and so it's perfect and it does have the potential to whiff i mean you could draw this turn one and it there is a possibility that it could cause you never to fail in which case it's done nothing so yeah i'll also say though that when you have rex's curse on the board you make the when he draws an elder sign you get to make the choice of whether to auto fail the test with his elder sign before rex's curses kick rex's curse kicks in so when you have Rex's curses out, curse out, pitching that uh, elder sign for three cards is starting to look a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just such a really cool weakness in design. Yeah. Like, so many of the other weaknesses in this game sort of feel copied or mirrored of each other. Like we were saying with Zoe and um, and Jenny, is that like you no, know, their weaknesses very feel very similar to one another. And I would argue that Skids and um, Roland's weaknesses feel sort of similar to one another as well. You know, there's sort okay. of these like side objectives you got to complete before you got to do it three happens. times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rex's weakness is so different than everyone mm -hmm. else's, and the way it like interacts and just kind of creates this emotional roller coaster throughout the game is just really exciting. And I think what they should strive for in weaknesses, and I think they've done a much better mm -hmm. job at like making weaknesses feel that way. Yeah. The fact that it's consistently hobbling. You know when it's out, and then when it's not out, you know it's coming. Like mm -hmm. that, that, that's that's a good in-game feeling to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's very flavorful that you know that curse always comes back to haunt you. Yeah, more often than not, these days it seems like with weaknesses that don't necessarily affect you. It's just like you draw your weakness. If it's not going to affect you, it gets shuffled back into your deck until it affects you, yeah. rather than one that is it hits the table annoys you and then gets shuffled back into your deck mm -hmm. to potentially annoy you again in the future so yeah weakness design has uh has gone all over the board <laughs> over the, in the in the life of the game what are uh, some of your uh, favorite uh, rex builds uh, as we mentioned with uh, during our review of zoe samaras there are uh, decks over on Arkham DB if you are interested in a sort of a starter deck for Rex that incorporates just the uh, the cards in the Revised Core and the Dunwich Legacy. But uh, if your card pool expands, uh, sky's the limit. Uh, what are some of your favorite builds? I mean, for me personally, I always love dipping into the rogue card pool for Rex because of his innate ability to succeed by two. You know, it's always nice to have lucky cigarette case in him maybe even some other assets that kind of deal with that sort of stuff as well lone wolf is another great mm -hmm. option quick thinking I also, yeah quick thinking as well yeah like rogue is really i feel like kind of his home and mm -hmm. maybe maybe he'd be a seeker rogue in a different life i don't know but yeah. i always really like dipping into rogue i also like uh, trying to dip into survivor as well because i do think the survivor is card pool can also really benefit from an investigator like rex because mm -hmm. the survivors tend to not be great at investigating but they're pretty good at everything else so having an investigator like rex who's good at investigating but not particularly great at everything else you know it's kind of really helps him to solidify his card pool a bit i admit my uh it may not be like the absolutely most effective way of doing rex but i i think it's actually a ton of fun and i've had some good experience with in the past so you'll note that his reaction says, after you succeed at a skill test by two or more while investigating, 
that doesn't that could be any investigate on any other card. Mm-hmm. Now there aren't so many of these in uh, you know in the core and the Dumbledore Legacy, but later on you start getting things like um, oh what's it my favorite in the know, which lets you investigate like remote investigate a, a, a location far away. So you can use in the know investigate a location far away, but if you just, if you succeed at that by two or more, you discover a clue at your current location. It's kind of like breaking those boundaries of uh, take and investigate, discover two clues mm. by packing in alternate way, alternate cards that let you investigate in weird ways while still discovering clues if you succeed by two. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of fun with stuff like that. Uh, Pocket Telescope in um, Edge of the Earth does this as well. I think there are, I mean, there's, with all of the uh, Dunwich Legacy Investigators, You've got a, a lot of different options. If you're building a Rex deck for multiplayer, you can simply pack it full of every good Seeker card, Dr. Milan, Higher Education, and just hoover up clues left, right, and center. If you're playing in lower player counts, uh, you've got uh, a few more options. I think Rogue is is certainly one. Survivor is uh, is another like we said, Guardian and Mystic, I don't think lend themselves particularly well to Rex's playstyle. Outside of uh, the Revised Core and uh, Dunwich, I'm, I've always wanted to build a Rex Curse deck. I did play one a little bit to test out some of the Curse cards, but I didn't find it worked particularly well. Uh, I've also wanted to build a Rex Moonstone deck. It's probably easier to just build a... a uh, a dark a Rex dark horse build but uh, moonstone is one of those cards that i think could be uh, interesting in him buffing his uh, willpower and agility so making him a little more resilient against the encounter deck but uh, yeah he's uh, he is one of my favorite seekers to play when i play seeker and uh, he's a lot of fun any final thoughts about rex yeah i, I think people sort of harp on rex a little bit i think the community consensus is that he is sort of a toxic investigator in a way because he's just so good and he's on the taboo list that people don't really pay much attention to him anymore but i think he should i think rex is a fine investigator especially nowadays you know i think the card pool and the investigator strength overall has sort of risen to rex's level oh, rather I than see. you know what i mean like i i think by and large, all of the investigators can match Rex's abilities pretty well, mm-hmm. barring you keep it limit once per round. Yes. Yeah, because that's the key thing to note about Rex is that a lot of investigators, their special abilities um, are kind of equivalent to an action. Um, perfect example, Roland. You do a thing, you get a clue, equivalent to a free investigate once per round. Let's see, Agnes. You take some horror, you get a free damage kind of equivalent to a free fight test once per round. Daisy, pretty obvious. <laughs> you get a, a fourth action with this to put to use on a tome once per round. The thing about Rex's is, is that you do the thing, like kind of like Roland, but you get to do you would get to do it as many times per round as you want. That was the problem. So by bringing it down to once per round, it, it's like perfect. It, it puts him right in line with like lots of other investigators. Zoe, engage a monster, get a resource, kind of like taking a resource action once per round. Yeah. Although, no, Zoe's in, Zoe is infinite, right? Yeah. But she's yeah. a weird one because it's really hard to engage lots and lots of things. You can't just yeah. do it over and over. Yeah. You can't yeah, engage the, something that's already engaged with you. you know? Yeah. The big, the big difference between an ability like Rex and an ability like Zoe's is that Zoe implies that you're taking on some risk. Yeah. Plus, it's limited. With, mm-hmm. Like, you, you can't just willfully do it, you know? Um, right. Yeah. Where Rex, you can just willfully do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So limiting it to once per round, perfect. Yeah. I'd agree that uh, I think when Rex initially came out, he got a, a pretty bad rep as being busted. I don't think he sees as, as much play as he used to, maybe because... Uh, I think Mandy has taken over the role as the busted seeker and Rex has sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit, but I've always enjoyed uh, playing him. 
Uh, if you do limit his ability to once per round, it does make it a, a lot more reasonable. I remember the first time I played Rex, I think I was forehanding with the uh, the other Dunwich investigators, and they literally had nothing else to do because <laughs> Rex was just so good at his job that the rest just sort of waited around until enemies showed up and then spanked them and, and continued to just sit around. So... He can be pretty, uh, pretty overpowered if you don't limit him. If you don't put the brakes on him a little bit, especially with the card pool at this time, like higher education, Doctor Milan Christopher, he has access to some of the most powerful cards in the game. And maybe if you were playing those cards in isolation, it wouldn't be so bad. But you get the combination of Dr. Milan and higher education and then some of the other seeker cards that come along later and they just all sort of synergize with each other so well that uh, he can be a real machine once he gets going. Oh man, I don't even want to imagine Rex with Eon Chart and Leo DeLuca. Holy oh, extra actions. Yeah. Holy jeez. <laughs> right, right. If you're not limiting him to once per round more actions more opportunities to trigger his ability mm -hmm. yeah. and more movement so you can get to more locations so that you can trigger his ability more yeah, yeah. it snowballs yeah. very quickly <laughs> point being once per round that's gonna do it for this episode if you enjoyed what you hear remember to like comment and subscribe if you need to contact me i can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com i'm also on twitter at manfromlang until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.